Okay, as promised, as soon as we got in the optional header for the Akrapovic carbon slip-on for our Ninja 400, we shot the follow-up video. When you pair the optional stainless steel header with their carbon slip-on, you now get a full system. Okay, so you need the two pieces. They are sold individually. Now let's start with all the legal disclaimer stuff, okay? Number one, let's check out the paperwork this thing's come with, okay? We're getting closer and closer every day to having a full ream of paper with the exhaust system. You've got instructions. They do a nice job with that. This video, I'm going to show you every step of the way what I did to install it. It's all also in here. There's a noise emission statement, all kinds of other great stuff in here, okay? It's important to know. This system is designed for closed course operation only. Is this street legal? Well, that is a negative. It is not street legal. What you choose to do with it, that's up to you after you purchase it. It's designed for closed course operation. There are, however, people who decide to use that kind of stuff on the street. Do I have to install a fuel controller? That's another big question that we get. The answer to this is very simple. To get the very best performance out of your investment in the exhaust system, yes, best practice is to put a fuel controller on, or have your ECU remapped to extract all the possible performance benefits out of it. Are you going to burn, am I gonna burn my motorcycle up if I ride around with this exhaust system on it because I haven't put a fuel controller or a tune on it? The answer to that is no, okay? Granted, there's exceptions to everything. However, over the last several years, we put a lot of exhaust on a lot of different bikes and many of them have not had a fuel controller or a tune done to them. One of them is right here to my left. It's Max Bands R3. This has a ton of systems put on it. We've never put a fuel control on it. We are about to now, because the kid needs a quick shifter because I'm tired of watching him try to stretch the throttle cables in half. Okay, so we're gonna do it now. This bike has almost 2,000 miles on it, zero damage. So just kind of blend that with a little bit of common sense too. This is a full proper exhaust system with back pressure. The Akrapovic carbon fiber slip-on, okay? It comes with a noise insert installed in it. We, after this install, we have revved it with and without the insert so you can hear the difference. You also can compare this to the slip-on video that we did to see if there's any difference in the exhaust note itself. By installing that optional header, you are now increasing the outlet diameter of the exhaust system. If you remember, if you refer back to the slip-on video, the diameter of the mid-pipe for the OE is much smaller than the Acura. So this slip-on comes with a reducer. It's a large, thick exhaust gasket that takes up that gap so you can use it with the OE header. When installing this optional header, you're going to take that gasket out and this is going to slip right over the Acra header. A full system encompasses everything from the cylinder head all the way back. Okay, you're replacing everything. So you've, re you've removed your cat. If there's a muffler box, you've removed that. So now you have your canister and an expertly welded header on this motorcycle. You'll also reuse the stock exhaust gaskets. We show you that when we do the install of the header. It's very simple to do. You should inspect them before you do it, but you will be reusing them. This slip-on has been tremendously popular for us. We have sold a metric shit ton of them, and we have a metric shit ton times two on back order right now coming in to us directly. If you're interested in more than just a slip-on in the full system, all right, we also have headers that will be in stock here. This stuff is really popular. It's selling through very, very rapidly, okay? So if when you see it become available and you're interested, best practice would be to jump on it because it's going to disappear really, really quick. With this system, you have everything it takes to do track days, to do racing. If you want to go get a full tune and try and extract all the power possible out of this bike, we're going to do a dyno tune comparison with all of our full systems here very shortly. We'll show you that as well. With Acra, you get literally the best of the best quality and fit. That's just the way it is. I'm not saying the other ones are bad. They're not. They're great. Some of the price points are different, and there's things I like about the other ones too. But man, the fit and finish of Acra, along with the quality of the welds, it truly is something special. And I'm glad that they came out with a system for the Ninja 400 that financially made sense and wasn't so expensive that nobody would ever purchase it. If you like what you see so far, you want to get one for yourself, we have every step of the install following this right now. Before we begin the exhaust install, let's start with our stock exhaust note. The 400's warmed up and ready to go. There it is at idle.
So as you would expect, that is pretty tame. We're gonna start by removing the stock canister. You've got your heat shield here. There is a worm style hose clamp up at the front. You've got a fastener right here. It's four mil. From there, pull forward. You can see there's a groove here that interacts with the tongue on the top of the stock canister to hold it in place. Canister mount, 10 mil. Keep all your stock hardware, even the stuff that you may not need to reuse to install the M4 system, keep it. OEM hardware is always nice quality stuff. It's great to have spares. We've got a 12 right here. And we'll get weights on all this stuff for you so you can compare the weight savings. It will be fairly significant. Now rotate that, slide it right off. Grab that hose clamp. You can loosen that a little more. Just go ahead and take it right off of that head pipe. You can reuse that somewhere else, I'm sure. Now, the oxygen sensor. We want to remove that. There's different ways to get this done. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I don't like to pull the whole harness out typically. So what you're going to see me do here is get some slack in it. And that's going to allow me to essentially rotate it like so. Plenty of slack. Break that loose. With the full system, M4 includes everything you would need. Reducers, if you're gonna run a different sensor here, using a different fuel controller, if you're just gonna block it off, they send all that with you. So, sky's the limit, you can see. Zero issues there, just rotating that. I'll set this out of harm's way now. We have four nuts up here at the header. These are all 12 mil. All I'm using is a six inch, six inch wobble extension. Might even be able to get away with a straight one. And a 12 millimeter deep wall socket. So once again, basic hand tools. We're gonna reuse these nuts, of course. I'm going to support the header now as I remove the last two flange nuts. Gotta love new bikes, they come apart so easy. Slide that down. There is your stock head pipe. Okay, step one is going to be installing these spigots and flanges up here in the cylinder head. You have to make sure your gaskets are intact and reusable. And if you look, the one on the left side right now, the brake side of the bike, it's kind of half hanging out, okay? From the factory, there's a little bit of grease in there that kind of helps to hold these in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and just tuck that back up in there and see if that will still be enough to hold it. If not, I do have a little bit of just standard grease that I'll use to hold that in place and as you can see I push that up in there just light pressure we're good to go check the other side looks great take the flange and I've slid this this comes right off of that header pipe the down tube okay just kind of twist on this hold on that twist on it'll slide right off I want you to install it like this keep a little pressure Grab two of the OE 
flange nuts. You can see I do have a little silicone on these still from previous installs. I like to put just a little dot of high temp silicone on the threads that protrude from the nut when it's all torqued down. It just helps to prevent them from vibrating loose. I'm just gonna clean that off a little bit. I'm holding that flange flush with the gasket. I'm gonna run that down just to the point where it's about seated and stop. And then we'll grab the other one and do the same thing. Okay, now one of the most important steps is to make sure that these are even, okay? If you have one that's pulled down a lot farther than the other, that is a negative, it can cause leaks, poor fit, so thread them both down while holding pressure on that flange. You can see it's nice and even. Right now, those are only finger tight. I'm not going to use a wrench at all. We're gonna put the other side on, same thing. nuts run them both down and make sure they're even and just the tiniest little bit of torque there with my fingers by doing it this way too, you're able to look up in there and make sure that the gaskets are installed and everything is good to go. The header comes with two hardware packages. One hardware package is, contains only four springs. These four springs are intended to be used up here. They recommend installing them now. So we will do that. You know, I've done this both ways. Um, they can be a little challenging to put in after the fact but it is definitely quite possible. And oftentimes, I would even just go ahead and install this after I assembled the entire header, okay, which is kind of opposite of what uh, Akrapovic has suggested with their instructions. So for this install, I decided to stay a little closer to what they recommended. So now that we have the flanges and spigots up there, we'll go ahead and assemble the header and get it ready to put on the bike. Okay, now we're going to assemble the header. It comes in three pieces. It has an adapter, so the stock, the OE Lambda sensor can be reused. This is a reducer. If you're gonna do a different level of tuning, that would require a full-size Lambda used, right? The larger of the two, you just pull that insert out and you're able to thread that in like an auto-tune, something like that. If you do not need an exhaust sensor at all, they also include a plug that can be safety wired to the header pipe. With the plug is one more crush washer that can be used to install that, okay? For our install today, we're gonna stick with the stock stuff, so we're just gonna put this to the side and save it for later. Also included in the second hardware kit is going to be three more of the exhaust springs, two of which will be used to put the three-piece header together. Go ahead and grab the down tubes. Kind of slide them in. Make sure they're seated. Okay, so when assembling the header, these two downpipes, they're different for sure, okay? They're not universal, you can't flip-flop them. And the easiest way to identify which is which is going to be this spring loop right here at the back where it attaches to the mid-pipe. You can see this one is on an angle, okay? It's pointing more towards my right in relationship to the downpipe. This one basically runs parallel with the entire downpipe. Okay, so the one on an angle is going to mount on the left side of the bike, like so. Slide it in, slides in, the acro the fit is amazing, of course, so it just dips right in there. Here on the other side, slide that in like so. Here's the other hardware kit with the three springs. One is for the muffler, the other two are for the downpipe attachment to that midpipe. I'm gonna go ahead and install those right now. You won't be able to access these at all when it's on the motorcycle, so you wanna do that right now. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can use a spring tool or you can use a pair of side cutters like so. Just like that, so. Most everyone is gonna have side cutters, not everyone's gonna have an exhaust spring tool. 
and this particular header did not include one in the kit. So you can see I'm grabbing it by the end. I'm not squeezing hard enough to cut through it, but I'm squeezing hard enough that it won't slide. And then pulling back towards me. And honestly, you want to be careful with this for sure. You know, take your time, get that dipped in. I double checked the torque on this to make sure it was tight from the factory, and it was. Now we need to take it over to the bike and slide the down tubes into the flange and spigots. Okay, now I want you to take a look at the angle that I've got here between the mid pipe and the two down pipes, because the relationship between all three of these is really important when it comes to actually sliding that into the spigots. So you want to begin from about this position here. And remember, even though you have the springs there and there's some tension, you're still able to manipulate these quite a bit. Coming over the bike, this is a great spot if you've got a buddy or something that can help you out. An extra set of hands never hurt anybody's feelings here. Supporting it with my left hand, I've got my right up here, and I want to get them both close to start, and I feel like that's pretty darn close. So now I'll start putting some pressure into one of the flanges, spigots, okay, and then try and get the other one to follow suit. And you can see that I'm wiggling from the back while putting pressure upward from the front right now. All right, I'm going to continue to do that. Like so. I've got the advantage right now of having the bike up on a work table. If I didn't have this, I'd certainly have a good rear stand underneath the back supporting it, okay, while wiggling it like that. And you want to be cognizant of how it's held and how much effort you put into pushing and wiggling on it at the same time. Okay, and that looks like that's we're there, man. That looks really good. Now we've got to install these springs. Once again, there's two ways to do it. If you happen to have a spring tool, this is where you would use that. I'm going to hold on to the downpipe and pull. If you don't have this, then you would use the same method that I showed you previously, simply using a pair of side cutters. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue around the pipe, sliding all of these on. Like so, go over the other side, do the other one. Okay, the next step I'm gonna take is I'm gonna go ahead and put the back portion of the system on. This is the carbon slip-on we had previously installed on the Ninja 400 right here. Something that's really important to show you, we already ran into a problem with this on a GSX-R1000 17 or 18 that uses the same concept. In order to make this slip-on work with both the OE header and the Acura optional header, Akrapovic includes a high temp reducer. Okay, it's a, just think of it as a thick gasket that slides right in there. You have to take that out because if you don't, it's not going to happen. It's never going to slide over, okay? So considering the fact that you may have already done that, make sure you take the gasket out. If you haven't and you're installing the full system at the same time, you will not need that. We had previously installed the carbon fiber strap onto this canister. Okay, if you need any help with that, feel free to go ahead and take a look at the previous video with the slip-on, and we'll show you that very clearly. Now, I have not tightened the nuts on the header flanges yet. Okay, I don't want to do that until I've got the system right where it needs to be. So I'm just going to slip this together back here. like so. Okay, once I've got that slid on, you want to make sure it's flush. You can see that this is going to ride in just a little bit of a different position than it did with the OE header. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this strap up a bit. And remember, if you had not previously installed only the slip on, this really isn't going to apply to you. Loosen that up. I'm going to slip it back. Until it's in that perfect spot where it just slides right through, which is going to be basically right there. Like so. Go ahead and snug that up. Okay. And now, washer. 
the nut this is actually a locking nut it mechanically locks so there's really no need to put any thread locker back here let's go ahead and get that started okay that is only finger tight right now and that really fits nice wow i mean that is the acro thing right the quality is just amazing go ahead and grab a spring You know, here I'll show you the sort of the spring tool method. And we'll go with the side cutters again and just kind of lightly squeeze, guide it up like so. And you can really see how that kind of pulls it right down, okay? Based on the design of this, how it's split at the end, I'm going to continue to use that barrel clamp that came with the slip on. I think that's important that that's still there. Even though it's going to seal up nice and tightly with just the spring, I think it's going to be important continue on with that clamp. Okay, final torque. Now that they're nice and even, put some final torque to this. If you're more comfortable using a torque wrench, now's a great time to grab that. Once I get these torqued all the way, I'll show you the little trick I like to use to make sure that they don't fall off if they do vibrate loose. It's nice and even. There's no reason to torque this down until you're just compressing that flange either. If you're rolling, starting to roll the ears of the flange over, all you've done is over torqued it, okay? There's no need to do that. This does not require a tremendous amount of torque. If you're distorting the flanges, you've gone too far. Now to ensure that they stay on, you could safety wire and drill these. That is really difficult to do. It's not a lot of fun. So what I like to do, high temp silicone. Just a dab and I put it on the exposed threads. Let's see if Steve can come right in on that one. When this dries, remember it's going to handle the heat of the exhaust, no problem. When this dries, that will hold that nut on. Even if it's a little bit loose, which it's not, that will keep it from falling off. I'm gonna do that now on all four of the exhaust studs. Okay, now it's time to put the stock Lambda sensor back in. What I like to do here is, I don't unplug it, okay? I don't see the need to do it, so I like to rotate the harness when I reinstall it opposite the direction that it threads in. Once I've done that a bit, I come over here, get it started, let that jump in, and unwind it, just like that. The wiring harnesses on these things are super durable. Okay, I've been doing this for a long time now, and if you've watched any of my exhaust videos, you'll know I don't unplug the O2 sensor, I never have, and I will guarantee to you we put more exhaust on our project bikes than most riders are ever gonna put on their own personal bikes. We've had great success with this, zero issues over the years. Okay, so you can do that with confidence. 17 millimeter wrench. Torque that down. Resecure the harness. Using the same stock mounting points. Like so that's just spring steel bends, super easy. Okay, now we come to the back of the bike here. It's time to snug up our canister strap as well as this barrel clamp. I'm going to tighten here first and then we'll finish with the barrel clamp. Got a 10 millimeter socket here, 13 millimeter wrench on the nut. Remember that is a nut that has mechanical lock, thread lock built into it. Run it down. And then I'll finish the final torque back here with the wrench. Like so. It's going to hold everything in position. We've already got the spring here, so this clamp, right, this joint is right where it needs to be. That is a 45 Torx. You don't need a tremendous amount of torque here. That is a really powerful clamp. Tons of clamping forces integrated into that, so you don't need to tighten that excessively. Now, 
One of the most important steps is this. Clearly, we've been handling this pipe a lot. There are fingerprints, handprints all over it. I know you're pumped and you want to start your bike, but if you don't clean this pipe before you do that, you're going to have your handprints burnt into it. It'll discolor the pipe where all the oil from your skin was. So to do that, to clean this, WD-40 and a couple of rags. I'm going to use one rag to do the initial cleaning and a second clean rag to dry it off completely. I'm going to wipe the whole system down, canister and all with this. Works great. This works well on titanium as well as stainless steel, which this is stainless. Doesn't really take a whole bunch. And everywhere we've touched. We are going to wipe down. Now certainly with Acro, one of the big attractions is you know, how well it fits, you know, the quality of the welds and such. So I think it makes this step even more important with their stuff because you really want that perfect finished result. And you can see clearly on there, we're definitely pulling some dirt and oils off the pipe. I'll usually just come back and extend this right into the canister. I found the WD-40 works fine on the carbon too. I haven't had any issues with that. Okay, we're ready to start the bike. Obviously, I've already warmed the engine, okay? You never want to cold rev your motor. The first note you're going to hear is going to be without the sound insert installed in the carbon can. sounds pretty darn good. Now I'm going to install the insert and we'll do it again. Make sure it's snug and we'll do it again. When the insert's installed, you're only talking like two to four decibels different, okay? It's not a ton. I do have an email out right now to Akropovic to ask them, does the system make more power with the insert in or with the insert out? Once we know that, we'll answer, we'll include that in the comment section of this YouTube video and of course, update our product listing. We're very close now to the point where we're gonna go ahead and take all the systems we have and do some dyno work with the partner that we have and see which system brings you the biggest gains. Now, it's really important to understand with this Afro full system, this is not street legal. This is designed for closed course operation only. It comes with all that paperwork that states just that. What you choose to do with it is your personal choice. This is the Akrapovic full exhaust system install on our 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400 project bike.